I stretch out my hands in front of me and I smile. Damn, I don't know what it was today, but today was a good day. I got done these three past papers, I made flashcards, I revised for my exam tomorrow, and I even went to the gym. Bro, I think I finally cracked the code to getting work done and being productive. Jeff Bezos who? I'm cooking, bro. And so I go to sleep, excited for tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be even better than today. God damn. So, you're back on YouTube, searching for motivation. For me, this cycle will repeat so, so often. The night before, I suddenly feel overwhelmingly motivated. I set the alarm for 5am. I do so many things tomorrow. And to my credit, I would. But that would be so, so short-lived that the next day after that, it would feel like a polar opposite. I'd feel like I have no control over my days. And that would just piss me off. And bro, when I was motivated, I was like the next Elon Musk, bro. Like the equations and the formulas were like floating around my head. But when I didn't feel motivated, which was like the majority of the time, I would waste so much time that it physically pained me. I would get nothing done in the day. And you can relate, right? If you only had more motivation, you would be so far ahead. All those things that you said you'd do, bro, like you'd get them done, right? If you had the motivation. Well, this video will solve all of those problems and you'll never feel demotivated again. Chapter one, the difference between drive and motivation. Drive is the reason you started in the first place. It's constant and it's purpose-centric, while motivation is the microburst of energy that you get to take action. Drive is a macro state of being. It's a characteristic, it's a mindset, and it's harder to attain, but it's also harder to lose sight of. Drive is more important and reliable. And motivation is just the feeling you feel where you have a clear vision of where you're running towards at the end of the race. Imagine if Mr. Beast put like the girl of your dreams or like a hundred thousand pounds at the end of that race. Bro, you're gonna be running the fastest you've ever run in your life in that race, right? And so how can we not lose sight of the finish line? of the rewards. What is the finish line? If you don't even know where the finish line is, or you don't even know what the reward is, obviously motivation won't appear. School is forced obviously, but you can still find the drive for it. What's the purpose of you working hard? For you, it might be that you want to become a doctor, and so to do that you need to get good grades. But let me tell you, that's a shit motivating factor. You don't run towards the doctor's coat. You're actually running towards the money, the status, your parents actually finally smiling at you, the car you can buy with the money, and you can kind of feel like superior over them, and you can act all smug. For a lot of you, as I just said, that would have stirred some inside of you right now that's motivation if you don't have something that you really really want you won't get motivated you have to be careful though to be 100% true to yourself going to the gym is a goal of a lot of people and people want to be motivated to go to the gym to get in shape but why is it that people and maybe you as well lack the motivation to go to the gym it's because you say I go to the gym because I want to get healthier and you end up quitting because that wasn't your actual goal the real goal was the likes the validation on Instagram that you'll probably get the girls that you could attract and of course like your health etc is actually a benefit but the real reason you started like What's the actual real reason? For a lot of us, it would be probably really shallow. For me, anyway. Like, for me, a motivating factor was during P, I wanted to, like, take my shirt off and I wanted to see, like, the respect in other boys' eyes looking at my body. Like, whoa. But, like, you get the point. You always need to ask yourself, what is it really that you're running towards? Because if you're running in a race and at the finish line, you set some fake goal where it's like, oh, I want to be healthier. Whereas, if it's a genuine goal that you really want to achieve, you want to get more likes on Instagram, the validation, you're going to run 10 times harder in that race, right? By the end of the day, every single goal, everything, it all starts with drive. And remind yourself about this drive the pot of gold the end of the race more often because obsession beats talent 100% of the time obsession is going to be talent every time you got all the talent in the world but are you obsessed whenever you need motivation look more for the drive move aside the things blocking the vision then motivation will naturally come the more true and authentic the drive is the more easy it is to stay motivated i hate studying but i don't hate the validation i don't hate walking on stage collecting my rewards i don't hate that people think i'm smart i don't hate that like in maths test people always ask me why i got in the maths test because they know that i probably got really high i don't dislike that i've been able to start a youtube channel about studying i don't dislike the money that i make from it now once you see like what's the real goals what are the things that come out of this and genuinely for you that you want out of it and once you see that the seeds that you planted start to bear fruit it's so easy to continue once i saw muscle in the gym motivation was easy once i saw that studying harder real benefits my grades started to go up i tasted the fruit it was delicious and it was easy to continue after that motivation only comes after seeing the rewards never lose sight of your drive but how do you find your drive well don't ask me that's something for you to think about but for the majority of the youth it's going to be something about the lifestyle look at this reel hey dad yeah. come here i told you one day i'd do it Here's for school. I got you. Here you go. No, no, no. no 40 no. grand. No, you're taking it. You got it. It's yours. I'm not. It's yours right here. I'm leaving. Fuck you, dude. I'll come. I'm making you. No limit. 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 No
for boys, but I'm assuming girls as well. This motivated like the fuck out of me, right? Because it ticks all the criteria. I'm literally staring at my drive. Thomas Hobbes said that all humans desire money, status, and power. And this just encapsulates that. Like studying, working hard, trying to get a good job. These are all like shallow goals. The thing that we actually really want is this, the lifestyle. So instead of like trying to trick yourself, oh, I'm going to like study hard for the sake of it. No, that's not true. Get yourself motivated by not losing sight of the actual goal. Okay, so now we're motivated to do the task right, work hard. But tomorrow, I'll lose sight of it again. And that's what happened to me. I knew the goal right now. You're probably like all hyped up right now as well. But the next day, I'll be demotivated and scrolling again because I lose sight of my goal. There's two ways to stop this. We can leverage jealousy. Whenever you scroll, whenever you do these bad things, you're actively undoing your progress towards your ultimate goal. Imagine we're in a race right now and it takes you 100 steps to go from point A to point B. Point A where you are right now and point B is like the money, the house, whatever. If you have a good productive day and you get four steps, but then the next day you feel demotivated and so you do the bad habits, you scroll, you don't do the things that got you the four steps ahead, you're actively taking two steps back. If you worked really hard to study for an entire week and you move forward seven spaces because you study every day for a week, but then you spend like the next day scrolling, just wasting that away, you're literally doing a 180 and unraveling your progress. And once you start to see procrastination and these like bad habits at something that goes literally quite against where you want to be it becomes far less appetizing right like it suddenly isn't something you want to do because it's actively getting you farther away from that goal but do you know what's worse people who don't scroll in that time the person who studies for seven days but then on the eighth day they also study they're destroying you they're actively taking away your pot of gold your pot of gold isn't reserved for you it doesn't have your name written on it it's whoever gets there first that's how a race works and you're like what the hell this like random asian guy who's like <laughs> I, I like it's like skinnier than me and like what the fuck am i yapping about and that just pissed you off right that random like guy in your class that you don't even like he's beating you in the race and he's gonna steal what's rightfully yours so go ahead and take it once you realize like these things are actually distracting you from where you want to really get to and because we establish what it is that we really want to get to it's natural that you're going to feel this sense of jealousy and you don't want to lose sight of it people might say that this is bad for your mental health whatever but andy elliott said that balance doesn't exist if you want a balanced lifestyle you'll get a balanced life a balanced life is just an average life balance doesn't exist only integration and so a really nice analogy that i'll leave you with today is this if you went to a buffet and you had a plate that you could fill up with for food, what would you do? You'd like put your favorite foods on there, you put stuff you'd like to eat, right? You wouldn't put like shit or piss on like that part of your plate, right? But when you live a balanced life and then you study for three quarters of the day, but then for the quarter of the day, you have a rest break and then you go and like take stuff. These things are literally unwinding your progress. You want your plate full of the most pure ingredients. You want it to be the best tasting, the things you will actually like. Balance doesn't exist. Everything you add onto that plate, everything you add into your life, studying for seven days, but then doing the bad things for the other days, those don't cancel out. Those actively show in your progress. Your pot of gold will be seven. 75% as small because balance doesn't exist. It's all about integration. All these things integrate and make up your goal. And it'll make up the rewards once you get there. But then how do I have fun then? Make rewards, having fun, all aligned to your goal. When I make progress in the gym, I buy better clothes, I buy water bottles, I treat myself to a steak or something like that. Why? Because as I'm doing that, I have a clear view of my drive, my goal, my purpose, and I know that these things are nice, they're treats for myself, but they're not unwinding my progress. In fact, they're like double knotting like onto the current bar that I'm on. So it makes it so that I'm more likely to go ahead because I've invested in myself. Instead of spending that money and going on a cheat meal, which has always been like a stupid idea in my opinion, because if you make progress, oh, I've been clean on no fat for six days, let me have like a seven hour fatathon like this weekend. Like it just doesn't make sense, right? As soon as you start to see these things as vices, as things that are taking you backwards from where you want to be. Just imagine like the $100,000 if you knew it was there, which it is probably much more than that. That's your potential right there. The money, the status, the, your dream girl, whatever. It's all there. And every time you take a couple of steps back, every time you compromise, every time you give a section of your plate off, that's like half of your goal getting away. And also your competition is like just like going to take that from you. The last thing I say is you can't expect to be always motivated. You can't say you want sunny days if there are no rainy days. You should adopt the same attitude to your emotions and motivation. If every day was a good day and you were like hyper motivated motivation would be meaningless if you have that finish line that pot of gold there in the first place which would be your first action step if you don't know what that is then just paint a picture of it that's why having like a vision board always having your drive always having what you want to get to in your mind and knowing where that is that's what's going to keep you motivated and in the long run you make progress in the short term in the day-to-day -day, might not seem like a lot but when you start to zoom out that's when you really see the progress and so another cheat code for motivation is a simple one simply being the best now for a lot of us being the best seems like it's out of the equation especially when it comes to studying but what if it wasn't well that's the thought that led me to creating a system that I now use for students around the world to help them become top students, sometimes the best in their class without studying for hours upon hours or being naturally intelligent. If that sounds interesting, go ahead and watch the free masterclass that I put together explaining how that works. And as always, take action and I'll see you next time.